Welcome back to Our Vision Farm. I wanted to do a little before video of this little garage that we have right in front of our property here. Um, this is eventually going to be our farm store. And right now we're in the process of getting quotes to redo the, the roof. Um, we were thinking we wanted to re-shingle it because it has a lot of missing shingles and it obviously we need to make it waterproof in order to, for it to become a actual farm store where customers can come and shop and buy our products so we're in the process of doing that um, we did get a quote he is supposed to come out and um, just finalize and measure everything because we opted for getting a green metal roof that's going to also match with our farmhouse but I wanted to show you guys the inside. I wanted to have kind of just a video on record of what the insides look like. You already pretty much know what the outside looks like. And once it gets the new roof, um, it'll look almost brand new. We do have to clean the siding before we actually open um, for business. But this is what it's looking like in the inside. We have a lot of things to clean up. We actually got rid of a lot of things that were already in here, but have slowly kind of just started piling up more things that we've removed from other parts of our house and property and thrown them in here. So we have some more cleaning up to do and I want to paint it. Um, right now it's all wood color. I'd love to paint it. I'm not sure what color yet. And uh, we'll see what best suits it. I don't know if I want to do white because um, just how dark it is right now. I feel like the white would come through. I'd have to do a lot of layers and coats of white. But the floor is a wooden floor and it seems to be in good com condition. Um, we do have to remove a lot of wood and things laying around in here. But I feel like um, everywhere that I can stand and physically see right now is in solid shape and there's no like crumbling or rotted wood on the floor as well as against the walls and the roof. Everything looks really nice and sturdy and you could tell this is made with good quality wood. I'm not sure how old this little garage is but this is going to be our future farm store and um, I don't think it's going to take too much to get it ready. We do have a broken window here. Um, we've never really replaced windows before, so I'm not sure if we're going to be replacing this window or just putting something over it to close it off. Uh, we have to replace the garage door. I think we're just going to remove it entirely. And instead of putting a new garage door, we're just going to go ahead and come up with a different plan for the doors. I want either sliding open doors, like the barn style doors, or maybe some uh, like openable ones that I open outwards that are just installed with hinges. So we're thinking about that. This is our current little roadside stand right now, our little mini stand where we started off selling apple cider donuts. Um, so we hope to get this project done by this summer, 2024. Um, like I said, it's really not too much work to do besides cleaning out the clutter in here and then like cleaning really good and getting all these, the dust and um, dirt in here out so we can give it a fresh coat of some type of color paint. Um, we'll figure out, um, we have tables to work on for now where we could set up products. Maybe we could do some shelves against the, the walls and uh, maybe shop around for some old furniture or keeping our eyes open for anything that people might throw out like little cabinets or hutches and things like that that I can use to display products on. I can refinish and repaint and make them look nice. Uh, just trying to go towards the old um, farm shop feel, kind of like how we had in our other property in Florida. Um, decorate with little antique trinkets and things like that. I don't want to make it um, super fancy in here or anything. I do want to make it look nice and um, Trying to figure out this garage does not have any electric connection right now. So we are thinking about somehow setting up solar, solar energy um, to run some lights for in here and to eventually have a freezer and fridge in here specifically for the products that we want to sell that we are going to have to keep cold. Uh, 
So I'm thinking that solar is something that we might want to experience, experiment with because as of right now, our house is kind of to the limit of how much power um, electricity is coming out of it. So we don't really want to connect this specific garage to our house electricity. It seems like that's what they did in the past, but I'm not sure none of this is connected anymore. I see some wires running up there. But as of now, this garage does not have any power to it. So I think solar energy would be good because um, obviously the electricity would come from the sun and we wouldn't have to worry about wasting more electricity. The, the startup cost to set up solar is going to be expensive, but I think it'll pay off. And I swear Maine is one of the sunniest states ever. It reminds me a lot about uh, Florida because we have a lot of sunshine here in Maine and I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem of harvesting enough sun to run things like light and maybe a small deep freezer. Uh, I looked, uh, I shopped around and saw that they do have solar powered freezers and deep freezers and things like that. Um, Worst case scenario, we can always run extension cords and just run it off of our house, but I really don't want to do that if we don't have to. But, I mean, solar lights are pretty easy to do. It's just the freezer and the fridge that I'm a little bit worried about and concerned of how much solar we'd really need to collect to run something like that 24-7. So this is going to be our future walk-in store. And what we want to sell in this little retail shop is going to be our jams, baked goods, a couple other products that I'm thinking about. Um... And obviously our seasonal vegetables, flowers, um, anything that comes out of our farm. I'm trying to work with the, uh, the state right now to see if when we process our chickens under the 1,000 chicken exemption that Maine offers, um, once we register for that exemption, I'm trying to see if we'd be allowed to sell our chickens inside of a farm shop or if it has to be direct person-to-person -person sales. So in that case, we'd just keep the chickens in a different freezer, maybe in the garage over there, and um, sell them to customers that way. But um, if we are allowed to keep it inside of the stand, that would be pretty cool because we can set up a freezer and then just have our chickens in stock and customers can buy them as they come instead of us physically having to be here. So I'm trying to find out more on that. I have a feeling they're probably going to say uh, that I can't have it on display in our farm shop. So we will see because I know to sell like red meats in a farm store or for retail, it has to be USDA inspected. So we'll figure that out um, whenever they email me back. And otherwise, all of our other products would definitely be eligible to be displayed in our farm store. And I even would like to offer other local products, like things that we don't produce, things like local honey and maybe pickled items because the rules for selling pickled items is just too complicated for what I want to do right now. But I would like to offer pickled products and honey and just more things, maybe eggs. Um, we're still thinking about whether we want to keep any laying hens on our property or not. So if we decide we don't, then maybe I can get some other local eggs to, to sell and offer on our farm stand. So this is a huge space to work in. I did a little farm store in Florida off our little 10 by 10 shed. So this is a 24 by 12 garage and it's a one car garage and it's gonna be a perfect and beautiful farm stand once we are done with it. Um, we're required to get a retail permit, so I have to get it looking nice and clean so that when we do the retail license and they come inspect the shop, everything is in good working order and looking nice and clean as it should since we're selling food out of it. And that is pretty much the plan for this. I can't wait to get started on it, but we're not gonna start on it until the roof is done. Right now, we don't really have like water leaking out, but there's certain spots where you can see through this wood that you can see like the open air because of the shingles missing. So 
once the roof gets replaced, then we'll start working on the inside and I will definitely show you the progress and how it looks. And once we are open for business in this summer of 2024 is when I hope and wish that we can get all of this done and get all our permits in line and in order so we can have this open to the public. I think it's just the perfect location is right here, right in front of our farmhouse, right off the road. And we get quite a bit of traffic on this road. This is like a truck, uh, a truck route, some type of truck route. We always get the logging trucks pass through here. And um, all of our customers that live around here, local customers. And I feel like once we start offering more products and more... Uh, seasonal items will get more people to come out here and shop from us and we have plenty of space we'd have to designate maybe some parking area spaces um, especially in the summer and fall time so we can set that up this is what it looks like right off the road so I, I imagine putting like a sign on this side of it like a big banner with our farm logo and information about our farm shop, our hours, and things like that. Right now we're only open on our little roadside stand Fridays and Saturdays. And I imagine in the summertime and in the fall time, we'll be able to open more, like have actual open hours more often, more days of the week. So, but for now, I think our winter hours are definitely going to stick to Fridays and Saturdays. We tried doing Friday, Saturday, and Sundays, but not a lot of people really came on Sundays. So we decided to just take that as a family day instead. So look forward to showing you the progress on that with the first step of getting the roof finished on it and then we'll go from there and finish it um, as we can get the inside finished and get it all set up to hold all of our products for this summertime so that is one of the major projects that we have to work on through the winter so that we have it ready at least we have all winter and all spring um, to to finish that project so it could be ready by summer it's definitely doable so that is one thing that we're working on another thing is our indoor seeds that we started so far i wanted to show you progress on those so our basil started sprouting and i just have two containers of those i wasn't sure how they were going to do but we got lots of little plants and seeds that sprouted in there um so the kiwi berries still have not come out of dormancy, but we still have them here by the sunny window. We moved the carmine jewel cherry trees to a grow tent in our other garage that has like a heater because um, the carmine jewel cherry trees definitely got confused with the cold weather and then um, the warm weather, like sitting here by the by the window and having our heater on. And we just wanted to keep them because it gets really cold in this room at night. We wanted to keep them in a more controlled environment. So we put them in a grow tent that has its own little designated heater. And they're doing good now. They lost all of their leaves. The leaves turned yellow and fell off. But now they have new buds growing. So once those grow some fresh leaves, I'll show you guys how they're doing. But he, here's the, loop, the lupins or lupines that we planted. They have started sprouting. And then next to it, I had started some thyme seeds and those started sprouting also. Um, the mint that we had in these little containers never grew. So I planted some more mint and we're gonna see if those come up. If they don't come up, that means it was probably just bad seeds. And I'll try something else in these little pots. And then the rosemary that we started in this cell tray has not sprouted yet. So we're still waiting on that to see if these were good seeds or not. This whole tray is supposed to be rosemary. And the hascap or honey berries are still doing really good and continuing to produce fresh leaves and pump out new growth. So still very happy about these. Um, the other day, I don't know. We actually, we had the heater on. It was a negative 10 degree night and we had kept the heater on. But when I came in here that morning, despite having the heater on, I have just this little heater is what we're using now because it circulates the air a little better. Despite the heater being on, this dirt was solid frozen that morning. And then 
I can't even tell which ones it was, but there were some leaves on these that had turned dark color and were kind of like um, very soft, like they had gotten frost damage on them. But they seem to have all bounced back, like we don't see any dead leaves from that one occasion. And after that, it has warmed up. It's been like 30 degrees outside. I'm not sure what temperature it's been um, at nighttime outside, but it has not gotten to like those deep negatives yet. So, but it's like after that cold snap that we had, they've just produced even more, almost like they like the cold snap, which is crazy. These are very cold hardy, but I just can't believe how like awake and alive they are and how nice they're growing with it being pretty chilly in here. All three varieties are doing really good. So definitely liking the honeyberries and definitely thinking that we will keep on buying more year after year so we can expand our orchard. And the carmine jewels, hopefully they bounce back good. It seems like they are now that they're more in a controlled environment. But I really like about these is that we're keeping them in a cold room. We're not doing too much to them besides watering them when needed and they seem to be doing good with very little care which is one of the reasons why I chose this plant because they were so cold, cold hardy and they're not very sensitive. Um, they're very hardy in general, not just cold hardy. They're very resistant to pests and like you really don't have to take care of them much or fertilize them much or even prune them much if you don't want to. So there's all the progress on all of our indoor things. I'm taking a week break off of sprouts and microgreens. We've done two microgreen harvests so far and then we've done sprouts a couple more times. We've been eating those ourselves. Um, and that is pretty much it for that. I'm just taking the week off so we can just take a break from doing that and that is pretty much it that's our updates for now what I'm most looking forward to is getting that little farm shop nice and ready even before we even start harvesting things to put in there to sell I can't wait to see it like finished and ready and we're just gonna enjoy the rest of this winter and continue writing out all our plans for spring and summertime for this year. And our first year is gonna be super busy and super exciting, but we're looking forward to sharing all the progress with you. So with that said, I'll see you in the next video with some more updates on anything new going on. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.